you want to make it so you guys are like fans of each other. You guys are fans of how much you love each other. You guys are like each other's best friend. You are each other's cheerleaders and you just like love your love together. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In case you're new here, my name is Kim. This is Core Union. Today, I want to actually read um, an email that somebody just sent to me yesterday or today. And basically, she's asking what she needs to do to live from the end to be in a healthy and happy relationship with her specific person after a 20 year physically and mentally uh, violent relationship. So I'm going to read this and then give my two cents in the hopes that this helps a lot of you guys who maybe you were with your specific person, you're in love with them, but there's something that always happens that keeps you guys from being able to be together and intimate. And it's something to do with your past that you maybe, maybe it's just something that's lingering there in your subconscious mind to keep you safe, okay? So before I get into this, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel if you love my content. If you want me to be your coach to help you manifest anything related to your specific person, whether you are with them or if you want to you know, get contact with them and be back together with them, or if you want to manifest anything related to health, finances, money, new career, anything at all, it's all the same feel free to email me a short description to kim at coreunion.com. Then go to my website, coreunion.com. You book either a single session or a package, and then my scheduling assistant will get back to you. So let me just read this and then whatever comes up, comes up. So she wrote, hi, Kim, I have a question for you. I'm manifesting my specific person. I'm doing a lot of inner work and I finally found my limiting beliefs, which are related to not feeling enough for a new relationship and a new man. This is because my old relationship of more than 20 years was made of physical and mental violence in which my ex-partner told me that no man would ever have the courage to be with me because I am a difficult woman and full of flaws. In that case, do I have to affirm from the end, as you always suggest us, if you had a year, uh, excuse me, a 20 year relationship through the experience in that 20 year relationship, you were made to feel less than the feeling of giving yourself to somebody scares you deep down on a subconscious level. And maybe it's even conscious, maybe you're aware of it because of how abusive your past relationship was. No matter what, you always want to live from and embody the state of living from the end of being in a happy relationship with your specific person, be it man, woman, doesn't matter. Because you've become aware that what basically you experienced is what the cause is of you not feeling safe, essentially being in a relationship. From my perspective, you want to learn how to manifest from the absolute highest level down. So that would be realizing what you are and who you actually are that is beneath the uh, surface, superficial, three-dimensional form that you are living out of, because that's just the instrument or the vehicle for the I am consciousness to create through you. You want to see your imagination as being incredibly powerful and your subconscious mind as being incredibly powerful. Tell yourself and really know and believe that relationships are a safe haven, that they're nurturing, that they're loving. Commitment and marriage is safe and it's safe for you to feel vulnerable. Would God feel fearful in a relationship? No, never. So you can also feel safe because you are also that, but in human form. Your ego, so who your, your physical ego is the form, but you are also the formless, the vastness, the omnipresent, the everything, the all, and your reality is your consciousness being basically shown to you through experiences, through everyone and everything in your reality and in all of your relationships. So if you don't like what you are experiencing now or what you experienced in the past, just step back from it and realize 
I experienced that because at that time in my life, maybe before I was in that relationship, I had a certain concept about myself, about other people, men or women, and about relationships, maybe that they weren't safe. So then I back then didn't realize how powerful I was. So I manifested a relationship that was full of pain and destruction and the things that subconsciously, you know, I had active within me, but it's not my fault because I wasn't aware of it. So it wasn't intentional. So I won't blame myself. If you are able to, it's very powerful that your specific person, basically, just like with my Marisol and just like everybody else, your specific person is basically showing you what your limitations are and what your fears are and what your belief system is on particular things. And in this case, in a romantic relationship that's intimate, you have to release and let go of your previous experience, the 20-year relationship. Now, from my perspective, Again, you want to do this from top down, from the highest level of operations, operation, knowing that you are all of it and everything is you. That's the case for everyone. But one of the things that you can do is if the time comes when you're triggered, you can go within, take some nice deep breaths, give yourself comfort, love yourself, tell yourself all of the things that you need to hear in that exact moment. Open yourself up to the I am consciousness because in that moment, you are probably feeling from your wound, from your human form. So it's okay to open yourself up to yourself and to God. However you want to think about it, that actually doesn't matter at all because I've been manifesting consciously since 2005, 2006. With none of these terms and none of these having to do this or that, it was simply believing in my heart and soul and trusting that my end existed and then letting go of any limiting beliefs, okay? So staying really focused more on what it is that you desire, what's in your heart of hearts and in your soul. So you're triggered, you take care of yourself, you love yourself. You can do a little revision with your ex-husband where you bring them in. I did this with my exes where you bring them in and if there's anything that you feel like you could have done better, you can apologize to them. In most cases, you're probably thinking of the things that they did to you. So allow them to be there. Allow yourself to say what you need to say. You can cry, you can scream, you can get it off your chest and then allow yourself to experience them realizing what they did to you and really being in their power and coming towards you and holding you and apologizing to you and just saying how deeply sorry that they are, that they're ashamed of the things that they did, but they realize what they did and that you deserved better and allow yourself to see that version of them if you can and to let, let them go. You can even have them, if you want, tell you you deserve to be with a man and in a relationship that sees you and you will have that. So please don't let what I did to you affect you because men are good. You can do that. You can also, which I think is very powerful, if you are aware that you had a belief that stemmed from when you were programmed as a child, we're saying like five, six years old, from when you were born up until that, you can also go within and get the things off of your chest from that age too, to whomever your caretakers were that made you feel unsafe in a relationship. And you can scream, you can yell, you can, you are safe to really give it to them. And you can allow yourself to see them realize what they did to stop themselves and to come to you and apologize and beg you for forgiveness. Release and let go of that because that's your programming and that's not what's happening now. That's not who you are anymore. Approach everything from a God state, from a powerful, empowered state. And in this state, you are fully loved. You are, you are realizing that everything is you pushed out. And you are also realizing that it's not even a matter of safety. You can't be touched. You are a sovereign being, right? So you can tell that little, the little ego within you that relationships are always safe and that you're always secure and that you're completely loved and lovable and that um, intimacy is safe. And it's safe for you to be completely taken. It's safe for you to completely surrender yourself and your body, mind, and that you are always going to be loved and truly cherished. And then you can do some inner work with your specific person energetically. 
the key here is that you, when you do the inner work, from my perspective, this is just my opinion and this is what works for me. When you wake up in the morning, as soon as you're aware of awareness, you want to remind yourself that that is who you are, that that you are consciousness in human form and that your entire reality is just showing you everything. And then obviously I can help you during a coaching session with giving you an actual practice to do. But I suggest that you tap in from, again, uh, again, a powerful state, empowering yourself then as being the creator, allowing yourself to have different inner conversations with the different people in your reality, have an inner conversation with your true love. Think of it this way. If you were in a loving, healthy, harmonious, and secure relationship, you guys would wake up in the morning, you would hold each other, you would give, give each other body rubs. You would, I mean, you may not, that's what, that's what, that's, this is just like kind of what I like. All right. So you would wake up and you would like rub each other down, you would kiss each other, you would smell each other, you'd probably giggle and laugh. And then you might say words of affirmation to each other and tell each other how much you love each other. Like, you're like, oh, I love the way you smell, my God. When you first wake up, you can kind of experience that energetically and then kind of go into doing the inner work. After you come out of that, now you're living your life, you're getting ready, you're walking to the bathroom. I don't know whether you have breakfast first or if you take a shower or whatever it is, but you're just carrying yourself in the energy and you are very much knowing that you that everything that you just did is creating your world and your experience. So you don't depend on anything outside of you. You don't depend on the mirror that's being reflected to you, which is the 3D reality, you don't depend on that to tell you whether you are doing anything right, because this is how we create our reality. It's just that we've been doing it all along without the awareness of it. So now that you're aware of it, now you just make sure that your thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs are in alignment with your end. And the best way to stay in the end is not to F around with the 3D and not to trust in the old experiences and, and in the problems and in anything that came up with your specific person, because all of those things were simply, again, the things for you to look at and make a decision to release and let them go. Okay. So then you carry yourself in the energy. And if you were in a loving relationship that's healthy, it wouldn't be codependent. And you also wouldn't be overly independent. It would be interdependent. So for example, you wake up, you did your inner work. Now you're getting ready. When you go to work, you can think back and imagine how wonderful when you woke up, how loving you guys were with each other. You can go back and remember that you ate breakfast together, that you you know, you can just use your imagination that way for like two seconds all throughout the day. Then later in the day you're working, you can imagine that the two of you guys were like texting adorable little emojis. Maybe it was like a lot of flirting, but then you're just like, I love how we are. I love like you guys, you want to make it. So you guys are like fans of each other. You guys are fans of how much you love each other. You guys are like each other's best friend. You are each other's cheerleaders and you just like love your love together. Towards the end of the day, in a normal, healthy relationship, you guys might start communicating a little bit about, so what are we going to do tonight? What do you want to do? What do you want to eat? Where do you want to go? This and that. In other words, you carry yourself in the energy energy of being that, being in, in the end. After work, you go out grocery shopping or anything, whatever you do, for like two seconds while you're doing things, you just feel into and imagine for two seconds. It's not complicated and it's not obsessive. You imagine for two seconds the energy of their presence of if they were with you. When you are making decisions with different life decisions of should we buy this, should we buy that, what about this, what about that, you can just have a quick little inner dialogue, baby, what do you think about this? Oh, I love that. Okay, awesome, let's do it. Do you see what I'm saying? So do, you don't have to make this obsessive or complicated. Then you're living your life. Say you come home with the groceries, you put it away, you're cooking for two seconds. You can throw some music on, you can dance and enjoy your life. And then for two seconds, imagine that they're right in front of you, holding you and kissing you or right behind you, holding you, like whatever you want. It doesn't always have to be the same thing, right? Carry this through when you're about to go to sleep. And then when you're about to go to sleep, you can somewhat 
repeat what you did in the morning, but you can also just fall asleep in the wish fulfilled. So you can be there. And I highly suggest that you don't just stay on your phone. I just recently realized I have like this really bad addiction to my phone. And so I need to stop this death scrolling thing that I do because I literally zap my own energy because I'm just constantly. So this is something I've been working on for the last few days. So anyway, try not to do a lot of scrolling before you go to bed. Try not to watch a lot of TV. Try instead to kind of do whatever to feel relaxed and then kind of you can imagine your day. You know how uh, Neville Goddard suggested, I believe in the power of awareness, one way to increase your ability to keep your attention and focus on what you want. He suggested the exercise. When you go to bed, you imagine your day backwards. So you would be imagining from when you got to bed, then what you did before that, before that, before that. I suggest that you can to live from the end of like the money, the health, the relationship with your specific person, you can just quickly imagine that they just kind of got in bed with you, that you guys did whatever you're going to do before you go to sleep. You can imagine having a quick little inner conversation, and then you can quickly just imagine the day, how the day was exactly how it was, but imagine that they were present in it with you. So it doesn't have to take long. It's not like it's going to take an hour for you to do this. It's just really quick. Don't overcomplicate this. And then you can imagine that you guys fell asleep together. The other thing is digging your ditches. I will, for example, me and my Marisol, we have our dream house. If I see something in terms of furniture that I really love, I will buy it and I will just store it. And that is digging ditches. So for example... Thanksgiving and Christmas is coming up. Don't get caught up on the day, okay? Instead, imagine that you guys wake up on Thanksgiving morning and, or if you're not like living with them then in your mind and you just want to be dating them and you want to spend Thanksgiving, imagine that you guys end up together on Thanksgiving morning. And then you can imagine that as if it's happening in the moment that you're imagining it, but then you don't worry about anything in the 3D. You can do the same thing for Christmas. For example, if you want to buy your mirror soul or your specific person a gift for Christmas, as long as if you actually physically buy it, it's not going to like become a thing then that you put so much pressure on your manifestation that if you don't end up hearing from them, like tomorrow or next week, you're going to freak out, then go ahead and buy the gift. That would be an example of digging your ditches. But no matter what, sometimes when you guys do this kind of thing, if you're not approaching it from operating from a higher level of realizing that you are, your entire reality is your consciousness, then these kinds of little things that I'm describing may put you in a little bit of resistance, okay? So anyway, I'm doing the best I can to describe to you from my perspective, the best way to live from the end and to release and let go of all of your previous manifestations, because everything that you've ever experienced in your reality were manifestations. In other words, it was life reflecting your subconscious programming back to you. Manifestation is not voodoo. It's not a magic trick. It's not something that you suddenly do. You don't have a choice of whether you are going to manifest or not. It's just simply a matter of consciousness. So your religion, your background, your philosophies and all of that, none of that matters because you're manifesting regardless. So I think it is partly the fault of more of a new age branding of manifestation that happened years ago that made people think that, ooh, you can start doing this now instead of teaching people that this is just like breathing. It's just like gravity. It just is what it is, okay? I love you so much. I pray that this video was of some value. If you need me, just reach out and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Nothing can come, nothing can come between us.